How's it? Long time no see. After returning from Richards Bay, the boat was now basically ready to start sailing, so we could get rid of a lot of the stuff we had uh, to work on the boat while it was down here at the bluff. So time to empty our garage and load up the truck and send everything back home to the transfer. Uh, also in this video we have a look at some putting up some mast steps and we mess around with the dinghy a bit. Might be a couple of other things, but let's get started. The Otop is back and it's time for the truck and trailer to go back home. Instead of towing up the trailer, we're gonna load it on the back of the truck and uh, all the other junk that we're not gonna put on the boat and go from there. This is my line to stop it from spinning too much. First, let's pick it up a little bit and see how it goes. Stop, 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 check yourself, stop, out of it. It looks like it needs to be a little bit adjusted still before it picks up nice and uniform. Also, I'm gonna remove that part there. Yeah. I just move that. Move your right boat also on the vice grip. On the what's the name? Next is goodbye to the table. Nee, ik ga gelijk.
So that's everything on the truck and uh, it's all ready to go back up. Uh, we didn't have use for most of it anymore. Obviously we could always use the workbench while we're still crafting away down here but that won't fit in the car back up. So the ladder had to go, the trailer had to go, all the workbenches and just a bunch of random things like our gum poles that we kept the boat up with and odds and ends, big toolboxes, stuff that we're not going to use anymore. The rest of the stuff that's left, I've got to go into the boat. After struggling to get the mainsail down the other day, when we returned back from Richards Bay, uh, first of all we cleaned it like I said last time, but now we figured we gotta get a better way of getting up the mast in case of emergencies or just in general uh, working on the mast. So we did some work and we got ourselves some mast steps. So is he doing maintenance today? Doing putting up our, uh, our mast steps which we got uh, donated for doing some work with the truck. We got these, so that's lacquer. me up at the mast doing what he does best it's going up the mast if you can call this up yeah it's now we're waiting for the wind to come up to go to the top when the wind is like 20 knots will go to the top hey, Tommy? no fun going up now so here we've got a mast step uh, like the ones we've been putting on the on the on the mast there you see it takes five pop rivets to go through and start to the mast basically does oops basically does this so that that's what it looks like on the mast then if you want to open it you just pull it up and then it falls back like that and you can step on it that supposedly takes 140 kilograms and since it holds my weight must be true we're trying our new safety, what is that knot called there? The red one at the top to show it there? Prusik. Prusik knot. To fisherman, double fisherman knot at the bottom. Bottom, yeah. so that's like an extra halyard with the safety. So we've got two there, one and the safety. Very safety conscious today. Me being the safety officer. Uh, he didn't have a hard hat, so unfortunately no hard hat today. So I found some random off cuts here, I'm quickly going to show you how to do the Prusnik knot. Uh, it's a climber's knot, very very useful if you don't want to buy all those expensive little gizmos. So here I've got a little bit of an off cut, it's a bit longer than I would have liked. But um, the way we use it, you got to first tie this off into a little circle. I'm just going to do a very basic, basic one because I'm not too worried about it, like a little reefing knot just to make it a, a circle because that's not the main part we're focused on like that pull it together that is called a reefing knot i think looks looks a little bit incorrect but anyway we wanted that circle what you do with the prusnik knot is you can't tension it too much it looks like as well it's going to come loose anyway you take your main rope that you want uh, to secure yourself to in case of a drop and you just flip it around there three times. You go one, two, three. 
flip it around there three times like that and then you put this one through the middle I gotta take all this off cut as well which usually shouldn't be there there we go and that's your prusnik you can just move it a little bit closer together put it there put it there and then th you can put your shackle or whatever through here and how this works is you can grab the knot like that and move it along the rope but as soon as you fall you know it, it tightens up and then if you take pressure off you can move it up or down again and if you fall pressure's up and that's basically the safety climbing knot helps you from falling down so you put this on the main halyard or whatever and as you climb you move it up move it up move it up as you work you can put some pressure on it hang from the mast or whatever needs to needs to be done you can also use a combination of two of these put your foot through the loops or whatever needs to be done the other use for it is if you want to remove some tension from a from a uh, like your genoa sheet or something that's been caught around the winch you just put this knot over and then uh, grab one of these ends put it around the winch and pull some slack and then remove it from the winch on this side anyway that's a bad knot instructional video so let's get back to the video two hours later Tommy's got a couple of steps on there starting to look good but it's beer time no no he's uh, he's uh, he's mutiny on board he wants beer otherwise he's not gonna work any further so uh, yeah but he's a captain so climb down Tommy and that green rope is actually shall I release it yeah. take the pressure off okay so release now watch your foot on that winch is gonna slide You might have seen our dinghy there on the deck on the last couple of sails but uh, we haven't actually inflated it on deck see if it will work properly proper pro pro listen properly properly how much of a struggle will be to keep it uninflated on the deck so that's what I'm gonna check now because we've got this two horsepower motor that we're borrowing I'm gonna see how that pulls the, the dinghy might swap that four horsepower one for this bad boy so let's quickly have a look if i can inflate this Ja, is zo. Dat is om
for my liking. Look at that hunk of junk. A two horsepower motor, although it runs lacquer and it, uh, it's uh, flipping light, which is amazing. It is a little bit lich in the brook, uh, not, not powerful enough for the two big oaks like us, so um, I think we're going to stick to the 4 horsepower for now. Um, but the dinghy is actually quite happy with it, it fits nicely on the deck of the boat uh, if we need to keep it inflated. And um, it's light to handle, uh, Yeah, so we'll probably just um, keep it around for now. You know, uh, we got to do some cruising first and start using the dinghy before we can probably point fingers it might be a little bit small for the two big oaks like us i don't know if i said that but um yeah so we'll we'll figure it out when we start cruising and we can always upgrade downgrade do whatever we need to do but for now it's good enough that's our episode thanks for watching uh we've been a little bit irregular with them in fact we're actually falling quite behind we've already done five Richards Bay trips, we've got our coastal skippers licenses and we're literally waiting for a window to start sailing down to Cape Town. So uh, I'll uh, catch, you little, catch you guys up a little bit, a bit more regular with the videos. Anyway, thanks for watching, a special thanks to our Patreons and we'll see you all again next week-ish. Cheers! Probably, probably, proper, prop, prop, properly. Now, listen properly.